what's up? Today's video is going to be about the camera gear I use as a small YouTuber. I only really started taking it seriously back in January and that's when I sort of like started settling down. I was traveling on my own. You know, I was able to develop this passion that I absolutely love and I can't get enough of it. But this video is gonna be beneficial for you guys because you're also probably thinking like, what does Alex need in order to make these lit videos? And they are lit, I'll tell you that. Not the old ones, they were, they were pathetic. But yeah, these ones are pretty cool now, aren't they? Also, mainly because of Final Cut Pro. Like, that thing is insane. Compared to iMovie, which I was using at the start, it blows out the water. It's gonna be beneficial for you because you'll be able to realize, like, what I use as, as, a, as, a, as a small YouTuber and like a, you know, uh, a, an amateur photographer, I'll call myself. After this holiday to Croatia, I absolutely loved it. I fell in love with it and I just want a better camera now. So, I'm gonna need my glasses. I'm not gonna need my glasses, but I want to wear them for this because I've written some stuff down and I need to read it. And I'm also gonna need a coffee because it's gonna be an absolute banger. So I'll see you on the other side of this intro. <laughs> concept bag it was about 35 pounds from Amazon it was literally the cheapest one around that I could get for a DSLR camera and you know it does the job it's not the best it's not big enough I do need a bigger one so I'm going to that's like a future investment obviously but the one thing that I particularly like about this bag is that it's got front zip elastic band in case my filters get stuck which happens a lot ND filters for my drone on the outside got a little attachment for where my tripod goes, my tripod goes here, but I'm using it right now. But yeah, the legs fit into that little hole in there, and then it goes around that thing, you just tighten it up. Very simple, but the tripod massively overweighs and outsizes the bag. And then when we look on the inside, we have these interchangeable compartments. So they're pretty good. We have an inner zip, which I keep a bunch of stuff in really, nothing too important and then we've got an inside case which I usually keep my cleaning kit so my cleaning kit goes in there a few bits go in there but yeah I usually keep my microphone and my dead cat muff thing that thing in there to prevent the wind keep my lens in there my GoPro like inflatable cover thing my GoPro stuff in there some other GoPro stuff in there and some like so things but this thing is honestly like so bad I'm, I'm actually going to chuck it out and then here are my filters my DSLR just goes in there in that bag I also usually keep this bad boy this is um this is literally a notepad for me to write anything down. There's a period in Hong Kong where I had so many video ideas, my money methods, that like I just couldn't keep them all in my head and I had them all down in my notes on my phone, but usually that sort of thing I never keep updated. Uh, so my notes that, on my, that I have on my laptop, that I have, I've got a daily checklist and all that sort of stuff, but it's, it's hard uh, for me to check it all on the electronic stuff. <laughs> So moving on to the main bit that you actually need for photos and videos, obviously the camera, you, the thing that I'm talking to and looking at. Sometimes people think you're crazy, but you know what, you get used to it. Anyway, my camera is a Canon EOS 200D. It's a very low range DSLR. On Amazon for the main body, it's about 439 pounds. And if you want it, I'll leave the link for that down in the description down below. You just click it, takes you straight there. But if you want to buy it with a 18 to 55 millimeter lens. It's an extra 110 pounds, so it's 549 pounds. But obviously you can't do anything without a lens, so it's a bit stupid that they sell. Actually, it's not stupid that they sell the body because you might have lenses from beforehand, so. I mainly take photographs and film in the manual mode, which is pretty good as far as it goes, considering it's a low range DSLR. Recently just got back from my Croatia holiday with a family, and I, you know, really actually tried to develop my photography skills there and found out that I properly enjoy it. So I'm getting more and more 
accustomed to what I need to know about the camera. Uh, but this one is, you know, not the best on the market, but I need to start somewhere. I was using my phone beforehand and yeah, it was all right. It's also got an LCD touch screen, which is flipped off out to the side here, which is pretty good. Um, you can flip it. So if you want to do a low range shot like this one, you can get really, really low at the camera and still see what you're taking a photo of or filming without having to lie down on the ground and you know put your head in funny positions. So that's pretty good. It's also got a mic up top. I use the Rode Video Go mic, I believe it's called, but I also use the Dead Cat windshield provider. Um, so yeah, that's pretty good, but I've just got it linked up to the mic system, which is at the side, down by the LCD um, touch screen again, and I record my audio manually. That's an also that's another good thing about this camera, is that you can change these things. You can change the, the volume of the audio, which lower volume usually is actually better quality, and you just ramp up the, the decibels in post-production. <laughs> Next bit of kit is my GoPro. This thing, don't hide it upside down. It is the Hero 6 and it's practically indestructible. Look, watch. I wasn't gonna do that. But yeah, no, I bought this thing beginning of January, mainly to attach to my surfboards alongside this thing. This is called a floaty. Nice orange so you can see it if it comes off. Uh, but yeah, you attach it to this thing, which attaches to the surfboard with a bit of string just in case that bit comes off so in case this comes off from the from the string this keeps it afloat uh, yeah etc but this is pretty good touch screen it's got very very good resolution it can film in 4k but if you want to do I think it can film in 4k up to 60 frames per second which is insane but if you want to do 120 frames per second I think it does 1080p, which is still very good. It's still very good. And this thing was awesome. This thing was with me for the first two months of me really taking uh, YouTube seriously. So it went, I bought it in Perth. Uh, I, take, I took it in the water on my surfboard. I took it on my uh, Gorilla Pod, which is the, the LED lights on that. And I was vlogging off that. My first, I think it's my first four or five vlogs that are off of that thing. Maybe four vlogs, but yeah, this thing is awesome, and I've got some really cool time lapses from Bondi with it because I had this and I didn't have my camera. Uh, but yeah, this GoPro is dope. <laughs> This thing, I think it's about 12, 13 years old. I found it in this office, which is my dad's, but I use it to make videos. In those cupboards right there, and it is shocking. It's really bad. I mean, it's pretty good from about 75 mil to 100 mil, but anything beyond maximum 135, it's just, it's diabolical really, like it's, it's got no stabilization. It does have the switch to, to switch between autofocus and manual focus, but I don't know how long that technology's been around. As far as filters go, the one I'm using right now is the circular polarizer lens or the CPL. I always have that on. I pretty much always have my ND filters on, apart from today. It's cloudy, I don't particularly need it. Macro filters. Macro filters are a very essential part of a photographer's bit of kit, particularly their camera bag, which is what this video is about. I have close up plus one, plus two, plus four, and plus ten, and I've only used close up one, plus, plus one, plus two, and plus four. Plus ten is incredible. 
I, I don't know what you'd use that for, but I haven't used it yet. And anyway, close up what plus one, plus two, and plus four will take photos like this. These are photos uh, that I took down in Cornwall, just testing it out. Moving on, ND filters are probably the best purchase I've ever made when it comes to camera gear, um, apart from a tripod. Yeah, apart from a tripod, is the, probably the best bit of kit. Oh, and a drone. Best bit of kit that I've ever bought was the uh, the ND filter. Uh, this thing I always, pretty much always have this bad boy on. So if I was to put it on now, I'll show you the difference. Yeah, it's pretty dark. Not very good. I haven't screwed on properly though as well. So I also have ND2 and ND4, but ND8 is the best in my opinion, for this camera, with the stuff I do. Are you ready for this one? This one's the best. This one's like, when I start thinking about it, I can't stop smiling. Or thinking about the most amazing photos and videos I've ever taken with it. Like, it's incredible. <sighs> oh yeah. I don't care if you guys think I'm nerdy having a drone. Sorry. But this thing is just insane. The Mavic Pro. So it started out with me going to Sydney for the first time as an individual traveller. My mate just flew back home. I stayed with a mate called Nico and he had his apartment up in Sydney and he was into photography. I met him on the Wit Sundays and he had this incredible camera. I think he had the ATD, I'm not quite sure. But anyway, I got to his apartment and he was showing me, like before I even got there, he sent me a link through about this video. And I clicked on it and it was this Mavic Pro. It was like, it was an advertisement about this thing. So I watched it and I was taken away. I was blown away instantly. Like, so much so that I bought it the next day. Smart investment, Alex. Saying that, it really was a smart investment because I've got a whole Facebook group about it now and it's purely because of my passion. I've got a whole Instagram account about it. I'm ready to drone, so go check that out. That's I've got so, so much of my life right now, before I start my job, is around my drone and you know there's competitions between me and my mates that have drones to you know fly to, to fly it because you can sync up your records and fly it and do all that sort of stuff and see who flew the fastest the furthest the, the highest and whatever yeah this is the drone having said that and raved about it so much and having an undying practically an undying passion for it uh it's caused me it has caused me some problems problems that i haven't been able to solve and not of dgi actually they haven't got back to me i should check that up basically it's been two weeks since they last sent me an email and i have my drone i did an emergency flying stock because it was too windy to land in cornwall so that's where you catch it on the underbelly you twist it over the compass is supposed to figure out that it's completely turned over and it turns off but it didn't. The propellers kept on going, kept on going, and cut up my finger. I don't have much feeling in it anymore. I had cuts on my thighs and stuff, and that was the third time that my drone had done something wrong. The Zion Smooth Q for the mobile phone. Not your Nokia brick, that wouldn't work out. But this thing's pretty sick. So one of the first purchases I made works like this. Stick it in here. Yeah, you make sure it balances. So basically, I've got this, and it's good for like fast action, fast pace stuff. So when I was getting someone to film me on the bike uh, in Bali, I used this thing because it was nice and smooth. It really was properly nice and smooth because I could get really down low, which you can't do well, particularly with the band, the strap, sorry, and the camera. <laughs> Moving 
moving on to the boring stuff. Come on in, come on in, come on in, come on in, come on in. Charges and stuff. Four USB ports, that's quite saucy. Focus, please, that would be lovely. A, an adapter. 